絵文字そのもののは単純に日本語で絵と文字というものを組み合わせたいろんなあの絵文字を考えるにあたって参考にしたのはやはりその看板であるとか割と公共的なところで使われているシンボルいろんな使われ方をしてあこんな使い方してるんだっていう発見をえー、させてもらえるのは非常に、えー、と面白い日本人の感覚からするとうんちの絵文字に顔がついてるっていうのはすごくおかしいと思いますけどただ、えー、世界的にはあの絵文字すごく人気があるっていうふうに聞いているので、まあ、それはそれですごく面白いなとは思います。ここまでで世界に普及したことが実感できない Why emoji is so popular. I think emojis came to, came to prominence at almost the exact time that the phone call died. It's really hard to convey humor and, and just fun conversations with friends via text. For years, people have put the, the colon and the, the bracket as a smiley face at the end of a sentence to just make sure that you know they're being friendly. So, It's definitely a, a, a sense that emoji allows you to be, set the tone of what you're saying. Palm trees, I put them in all my emails. I dot the bottom of my emails with palm trees sometimes. Just to liven the mood that I feel like, you know, no one likes getting emails, but you put some palm trees at the bottom, I always get compliments. The official names for a lot of emojis don't really correlate with how people use them. Today, there's so many new emojis coming along, and yet more and more we're finding that people are searching for emojis that don't exist. The process to propose an emoji is completely open. Actually, anyone can submit an emoji proposal. 
sort of an interesting discussion that might be yet to come up of uh, where do you draw the line? Exactly like it. Oh my god, look how badly I taped it. Oh, I'm so crazy. My mum's best friend also heard about the emoji. Oh, how does like everybody know? No. Wait, did I, you guys saw the, the newspaper or my face is on it, the first page? Yeah, yeah, the journal, yeah, yeah. Right? You know how we looked, we saw this by yeah. accident? Yeah. I was looking at the newspapers, it's like, this is Rayouf! <laughs> <laughs> he looked down and throw! You know, 15 years old is making all these fuzz about this. No, on the front of the newspaper, you have to frame that. I started using emojis when I was around 11 years old, when I had my first like iPhone or smartphone that I could type on. For communication with friends, it's a really huge part to the point that it's kind of scary. No, wait, I'm pretty sure your favorite was it. One was like one of the innocent ones. The laughing with the tears. Yeah, but it was the, our group chat or some other group chat. I remember every text came out with like the laughing face emoji right after each other. I'm like, that's your this favorite? This is our group chat. Five months ago, I created a group chat for my friends on WhatsApp. Both my friends, Jemima and Nelly, they had an emoji to represent them. But I didn't have one. So like to showcase me, me a hijabi, I jokingly put the emoji of a turban next to two intertwined arrows next to a woman in brackets to convey me a hijabi. But that's what got me thinking, why on earth is there no hijab emoji? My name is Raif Al-Humaydi, I'm 15 years old. I'm from Saudi Arabia, but I currently live in Berlin, Germany. According to a 2015 report... So you didn't read in the actual... Baba, I, okay, this okay. is a statistic. Uh, okay, so this is fine. Muslim-majority countries enjoy some of the world's highest rates of smartphone penetration. If there are four emojis to represent mm -hmm. the four different stages of a mailbox, why on earth isn't there one to represent the half a billion Muslims that wear the headscarf? Half a billion? That's a huge number. Mm, that's not is. represented. Yeah. Yes, it is. Okay, that's a, that's a really mm -hmm. smart idea. You did the statistics in your study? Yeah. In your proposal? Yeah, most of them, That's yeah. very convincing. Emojis are a very small example, but it's critical to note the importance of representation. And whenever you have the chance to strive for diversity, you should definitely take it, because at the end of the day, it will only promote tolerance and acceptance and cultural awareness. That's good. Thank you! Nice. That was so long. Good job, good job. Oh, how do people do presentations like every day? Oh, I'm yeah, so tired. Good, good, good presentation. I think they will like it. It's very really good. Yeah. So first, I uh, wrote to Apple's customer service requesting the hijab emoji. Didn't get a reply because Apple doesn't deal with these things. But one day I see the Unicode Consortium, the organization that deals with all the emojis. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Like there is an actual organization that I could contact. I created a five page proposal and it will be decided whether it will be approved or not this November 7th. I will be presenting to the Unicode Technical Committee in San Francisco. Have some glorified titles with Unicode. I have missed one meeting and that one meeting they decided to elect me to be vice chair of the Unicode Technical Committee. So. My name is Mark Davis and I'm the president and co-founder of the Unicode Consortium. 
I chair the Unicode Technical Committee, and I've done that for 20 years. It says, UTC chair, this is my gavel. And I take it and I... The consortium is composed of people from all the world's biggest companies. Our primary goal is representing all the world's languages so that they work on computers and smart devices. Before Unicode, the world we lived in, it was a mess. You had a set of codes that you would use for German. You had a set of codes you'd use for Japanese. You had a set of codes you'd use for Chinese. You couldn't really match them. Ideally, if I were to write you, you wouldn't get a question mark, you wouldn't get a square box, you wouldn't get something unreadable. That's what Unicode is all about, making the languages of the world work on all those smart devices. And often, as part of writing systems, there are symbols. Emoji are new and rather different symbols. Emoji started out in Japan. Cell phone carriers at that time were having problems because each implementation of emoji were different. So when one person would maybe send a heart to their girlfriend, the girlfriend would see some weird symbol. We decided, OK, uh, we will incorporate these pictographic symbols into Unicode. So now if I text you a lizard, what you see on your screen hopefully will be a lizard, something you understand to be a lizard. Uh, and look fairly much like a lizard. With emoji, unlike established languages, we're evaluating something that's really being invented. We get hundreds of proposals, but we only encode 60 emoji a year. Bueno, nací en Argentina y vivo en la capital, en la capital que se llama Buenos Aires. Eh, no estamos grabando todavía, ¿no? Estamos practicando. Are we shooting? Toma lo que viene, lo que hay. Ella toma el mate cocido. Gracias. Ah, probamos. Y este puede ser contar. A medida que vas usando, yo uso mucho los emojis, soy muy expresiva. Y lo que nos damos cuenta es que cuando uno mira eh, la, los distintos tipos de emojis que hay, ¿no? O sea, nos falta encontrar cosas de nuestra cultura. ¿No? Y pensando con qué emoji empezar, y me parecía que teníamos que ir por el mate. Toman el mate una vez por semana, una vez por mes, todos los días. 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 El mate... En el mundo, el que no lo conoce, piensa erróneamente que es algún tipo de droga. No tiene nada que ver con, con drogas, sino que es una especie de té verde. Acá es muy común también que se te inviten a tu casa. Pasá a tomarte unos mates, dicen. Yo digo, ¿habrá algo para comer o solo mate? Ay, para comer, comer. Acá, tenemos... no, no, en la... Acá en Argentina uno sin tomar mate no puedes quedarte mucho tiempo. Hay chiquitos que toman mate, hay bebés que toman mate. De... Siete meses tienen así, todavía no caminan y toman mate. ¿Por qué no poníamos así? ¿Ves? Un poquito más levantado ahí. Claro, sí, 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 con la inclinación y... Claro. ¿No está muy larga la, la bombilla o está bien la proporción? Me daría la impresión, ¿no? De que está larga. Uh -huh. Que la bombilla no sea más alta que el mate. Entonces ahora vamos con la hierba. ¿Qué haría? Subí un toquecito el verde. Subí un poco el verde. El green. No, ese. ese ahí es ya red. se va modificando ese acá. Ese es el red. Vean. Ahí está, ahí está, ahí está. No toques más. Se identifica sí. en una foto como un buen mate. No como los que me cebó tu mamá en el viaje. No, sí. qué feo, la mitad no, del documental. Triste. Porque uno dice pizza es Italia. Uno dice hamburguesa es Estados Unidos. Y decís mate es uno de los iconos de la cultura argentina. 
Es verde. Es un más am... Ves que es un verde puro más amarronado. Sí, sí. claro. No, es una ensalada, como es que tiene una ensalada. Vine para esto, así que ningún problema. Los lo que quieran las vueltas que quieran dar, no hay nada. Tranquilo, somos bien, tres mujeres con otro nombre, te vamos a ver loco. Algo que mucha gente piensa que no tiene nada que ver, el, siendo algo tan chiquito como un, el, como, como un icono, como un emoji, eh, es en parte la difusión y el apoyo de toda una identidad. Eh, la aplicación. ¿Se presenta cuando ahora en enero? Se puede, si llegamos a presentarlo el 23 de enero. Tanto uh -huh. detalle para algo que va a ser minúsculo, pero bueno. Ahí está perfecto. Tengo un amigo, sí, que dice que los emojis son como los jeroglíficos, volver a la época de los jeroglíficos, que se hablaba por símbolos, una lengua universal. No sé si podría ser el único lenguaje. A mí me parece que los emojis sirven para comunicarse a personas que no hablamos el mismo idioma. Que facilitaría en reemplazar el Google Translate mandándote emojis eh, para tratar de comunicarte. Es tu Gmail. Santi, no es Gmail, ¿no? Sí, por si yo me, por si yo me muero, que otros tengan acceso a eso. Tyler Stevlin, and I'm accidentally a world emoji expert. Uh, I got my start by, my dissertation was from Stanford uh, in linguistics. You know, there are two different camps here. There's the unga bunga camp that's like, emoji are destroying our language, we won't have any more language left. Uh, that's, this is all we'll have. It's going to, civilization's going to end. The other is, Ooh, here's this, these sort of symbols, and the whole world can use them, and soon we will have world peace and live on a higher plane. So, sat, sort of, I like that vision, but that's, neither of these are going to happen. The one thing that is true about emoji is that it's, it's a way of sort of being engaged emotionally in a positive way. The most popular ones by far are sort of smiley faces and hearts. Right? So that really is telling you something about how people are using these, right? They're using them with intimate relationships, uh, and they're using them to do kind of happiness work. People get pet names, right? So I know uh, people who, you know, call each other Sparkle Tiger and Honey Bear, right? This is, these are how they refer to each other and they have a little emoji to help it. There's clearly great expressive power for emoji, but a world language, well, there are hundreds and hundreds of emoji, but you and I probably have between 50 and 100,000 words in our vocabulary. And what kind of things do, does the world need to talk about, right? If it's day-to-day -day stuff like, oh, could you get me a sushi at the, the market? And by the way, bring it in the ambulance, like, okay, fine. But the things that the world needs to talk about, like free trade agreements, <laughs> uh, you know, e Ebola and other epidemics, that's not gonna, emoji are not really gonna help solve that. So this is my wall of for Korean masks and Indonesian masks. The Indonesian masks I bought in the Netherlands. The Korean masks, some of them I bought in Korea, and uh, a couple of them were given to me as gifts. The uh, dark one with the cloth behind represents, in uh, Korean folk theater, represents the teacher. I love it because it's very mean and nasty looking. When I started studying emoji, I had been interviewed already several times by journalists about this emergent emoji phenomenon and was it a new language? Was this like a, maybe a pigeon language or a creole language? 
And I said no at that time. I, I, being a good linguist, I said, well, in order to have a language, you have to have certain things. You have to have grammatical categories. And the current emoji lack in certain categories. In emoji, you can't talk about the past or the future very well. You can't um, uh, have a flashback if you're telling a story. You have to have things that express abstract concepts. And most emoji are very concrete. But what converted me was the work that I've been doing looking at emoji sequences, sequences of two or more emoji uh, in Chinese on a platform called Sina Weibo, which is kind of like the Chinese Twitter. And lo and behold, we started seeing patterns emerging. What the people are doing is they're adapting the existing emoji and using them in novel ways. For example, they're using a noun as a verb. So they'll use microphone to refer to the activity of singing. And I've seen people do some pretty interesting things to create pronouns to refer to I and you. One person was using an up arrow for I and a down arrow for you. So we're seeing evidence that users are moving emoji towards being more language-like. I think humans have an innate urge to create language. We get proposals for just about every emoji under the sun. Anybody can actually make a proposal for emoji. Uh, we, we'd like, and, and you know, so Unicode would like that proposal to be well-formed, we actually have a document on our website that says, here's how to make an emoji proposal. One of the reasons we are fairly conservative is that every emoji that we put into Unicode is going to be in Unicode after you and I are both dust. We have to be very careful with the process that what we ultimately encode is going to be something that has permanence and will stand the test of time. Good morning. Um, this is just a midway check-in for our period emoji campaign. And this meeting is just for us to see how things are going um, and just give a bit of an update on where everyone is on the different areas they've worked on. Well, we had quite a lot of shares and also quite a few likes. The comments have been mainly around why do we need this? Mm -hmm. So like people basically saying like, you know, we don't think this is important. So I want to start be targeting people with the menstrual manifesto, mm. especially because I think that will Such a good fit. describe it a mm. bit better, like kind of put a bit of context into like yeah. why we're doing it, you know? Great. Um, and then the submission, I guess, at the next step. So when we finish up on the 26th, we'll be working on the submission for yes. Unicode. We're a children's charity with a girls' rights focus. I remember sitting around this table for an afternoon of sort of brainstorming and jokingly saying, what about a menstrual hygiene emoji, thinking that no one would really react. But then we got talking to some colleagues and started sketching blood drops and reproductive systems. My favorite was the uterus. We were looking at it thinking, 
looks a bit like an alien. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or a goat. Yeah, goat. A really common yeah. one was people saying, why are you promoting this goat? And how has it <laughs> got anything to do with menstruation? So those are the emoji designs. You kind of need to keep it quite simple. The pants were my favorite. Um, when we went to the vote, the ones that was voted the most was the, um, the pants, which I was pleased with. We've had a lot of successes with media and I think they took this on as a feminist issue. I would say we had close to a thousand news reports in probably a three day period. It was great. incredible, yeah. yeah. It's the biggest spike we've ever seen in web traffic. It's still yet to be beaten in any way. <laughs> it was uh... amazing. But of course, we're, we'll all be waiting patiently to see what actually happens. When we find out either way, we'll do press around it. And the BBC is interested. I don't think any language in the history of the world is, has been, you know, decision by a committee like that. Yeah, um, right, yeah. Mm. I think like it is just like a bunch of like it's old like old white guys basically who've been knocking about like Silicon Valley for like quite a long time, banging their gavel. I'll keep us posted about how you're going, and um, we'll we'll do whatever we can to support you. Sorry, do, do you have a moment, or are you in a rush? You in a rush? Oh, no worries, man. I work for Pan International UK, which okay. is a girls' rights uh, organisation, uh -huh. um, and we are campaigning for a period emoji. Okay. Um, you agree that we need a period emoji? Why not? Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, we've got a pair of pants with blood drops on them. So okay. this was actually submitted. We have lots of different emojis for lots of yeah. different things, yeah. like bagels, <laughs> poop. <laughs> I know, we've got a couple yes, of them. Quite frankly, yes, yeah, yeah. So what, what does that mean if we don't yeah. have a period of yeah. energy? Yeah, I think it's a great idea. I think oh. it's a great idea, especially for younger, younger girls as well who are just starting their period. It's a light-hearted thing, but it is something that sort of strategically really does fit into what we want to do around changing the conversation about periods and, and normalizing periods in cultures around the world young girls who don't feel comfortable to say that they need menstrual hygiene products and are using unsafe methods and it starts getting in the way of their education. And I think getting a global emoji could go some way to saying, it's okay, I can talk about this. This isn't the most embarrassing thing in the world. So Emoji Nation is an emoji advocacy group whose motto is emoji by the people for the people. And we basically fight for more inclusive and diverse emoji. Until 2016, the only things that you could be as a girl were dancer, princess, bride, or playboy bunny. I grew up reading and writing Chinese. And one of the interesting things is like, I like to say like Chinese characters are the original like emoji. And one of the characters that's been really interesting to see how it's used is the word for woman, which is nu. And the way that it's combined kind of shows you the mentality of like ancient China at the time. For example, woman underneath a roof means the word peace. So things are at peace when the woman is at, you know, under a roof. A woman with a child, or a woman specifically with a boy child, means good. But like three women together means wicked. So this idea is from the very beginning hardwired into how kids learn their Chinese characters. To some extent, if kids communicate through emoji, what they're able to say comes from the emoji keyboard, and what is on the emoji keyboard therefore kind of defines their world. But one of the, the tricky issues is like, how do you get an entire world into a unified set of emoji? Obviously being a universal system that different gestures and, and signs look, mean different things to different people. The thumbs up in some countries is an offensive gesture. The peace sign is universally known, but there's the reverse of that, which is offensive in the UK. It's, uh, it's like the middle finger. The OK sign, also it's offensive in some countries, but not in others. 
So if we only had emojis to communicate in, I could imagine diplomatic issues being very problematic. That emojis can be interpreted in all kinds of different ways. I think it'd be very hard to get anything done. It's funny that Tinder appeared really at the same time as emoji took off. And I think if emoji didn't exist, uh, we might have had to create it to make Tinder the sort of universe it is. And I love some of the creative ways that people have used emoji. So one of my favorites is someone created a road with a car being chased by a whole bunch of police car in palm trees, and someone said, this could be us running away from it all. When you're going out and meeting someone completely new, you know, it's a very emotionally fraught thing. You're like putting yourself out there. And the difficult part of it is emoji are easy to misunderstand. How many of you have ever had an awkward moment? You are executives on the rise. I'm a national etiquette expert, and one of the things that I'm asked about often is emojis. When can I use emojis and when should I not use emojis? And emojis are a great tool, but they have to be used at the right time. What emojis are not okay to use? What emojis are not okay to use? The eggplant would be one. <laughs> The peach would be another one. Anything that would send the wrong potential wrong message. Obviously not those, but example, a winky face. So a winky face would not be appropriate for business. But if the boss sends you one. If the boss sends you one, still not appropriate. <laughs> More inappropriate. <laughs> Even worse. <laughs> OK. Often, we send an emoji, and it's ambiguous. And we're not, we're not even certain what it means. We think we know. You bring the bread to your mouth with one bite. It's much like learning a new language. It's up to us to do our research. If we're going to use them, we need to, we need to look into it and see what they do mean. actually have went through and counted every single emoji and used them before. So I think I've mastered all of the emojis. I'm Brooklyn Queen from Detroit, 13 years old. I was like, we need to make a song about emojis because I use emojis every single day. <laughs> <laughs> Look how long my hair is. My hair's not that long anymore. Send me an emoji and it goes straight to my pocket. When I'm going live, they post emojis while they watching. All they post is fire flames, they think that I'm the hottest. I use waves and fire flames a lot because waves is basically like you're a trend and people like want to ride your wave. Hot as kissy face, waves with the fire flame. When you and fire flames mean like you're lit, like you're hype. What's so cool, smiley face with the shades. If you're trying to show some love, drop a heart on my page. I knew it was going to be big, but I didn't know it was going to get, like, 100 million views on the song. Oh, I got, I got something for you. I got to find what I'm trying to say. I'm scared. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you shouldn't. Me and my mom use emojis differently. If I comment under her picture with too many emojis, she'll text me. Like, you're doing too much. Is it a rule for, like, people under 18? Who is the emoji rule maker? No one wrote the rules. It's just, like... Like, for instance, I got yelled at for this. One of her supporters posted a, a tongue, an eggplant, and a smile, like a heart. And I went underneath it and tagged him and put the, the eggplant and the heart back. And she went crazy on me. And I don't know, I'm like, what is wrong? I'm just commenting back. She's like, no, delete that whole comment. This is soup, lentil soup with a soup of Are you excited? 
I am very excited, but uh, plus that sometimes I'm a little bit nervous because this first time for you to leave uh, me. <laughs> no. The emoji is uh, the fantastic thing for a short time. I like it. I don't like it to make text long. <laughs> but when they have an emoji, <laughs> like took you done. Like yesterday, if my mother she can't uh, uh, write. Okay, mm -hmm. we we told her just to choose which face you like. So she can, <laughs> she can read, right? <laughs> yes. On Facebook, of course, you have to look at the comments, like see what are people saying, and then like some of them were really supportive. Of course, some of them were like, "Oh, great! It's so great that someone is doing something about it." Some of them, you know, they used very harsh language. It's just, but like some of them were saying like that it was a symbol of oppression and it's awful that I'm doing this. <laughs> some people said, oh, we already have one and they added the bomb emoji. Yes. Ah. Once the emoji is included onto our keyboards, hopefully it will normalize the idea of a hijab and Muslim head coverings. And if it doesn't pass, it's be interesting to know why. Yahoo. This one was uh, the Emoji Diversity Lobby. And they created an emoji that looked like me. Look at this. <laughs> I get a lot of emails from reporters and stuff. Everybody wants to talk about Unicode, you know. So I said, I can tell you about my experience. The only story I can tell is my own. Here are some of the proposals that we submitted to Unicode. This is the very first one. Uh, it's dated uh, April of 2014. I think we started off with the five skin tones. The police officer, the female and male. Well, my daughter introduced me to it. She came home, she says, it sure would be nice to be able to send an emoji to my friend that looks like me. I said, oh, really? I said, that sounds great. What is an emoji? After I did the research, I mean, there are trillions of these that are sent by way of text messaging every year all over the world. And they were all Caucasian. And if you're sending these images to people and they all look like somebody else, you know, it's, it just doesn't make you feel good. You do it because that's the only option you have. I said, this is a huge opportunity to represent everybody. I said, I'm not going to just do one. I'm going to do five skin tones. When I gave my presentation there, it was folks just sitting around a table. And I was real adamant about what would be acceptable. And the whole room got quiet. 
and they said to me, no one was taking diverse emoji seriously until you came and gave your presentation. You touch the screen and the five skin tones pop up. You let the user decide what color representation that they're interested in. I didn't realize it would be so impactful, but it has been. Maya started using emoji at the age of three and four. I think at the beginning, she picked pictures that she liked herself. You know, it was almost more like she was sharing her artwork in the way that you would, you know, coming home from preschool saying, look what I drew today. But I think it changed over time. I used that one for mommy and that one for daddy. She would look for an image of herself or her family. She would always look for the little girl with pigtails because she often has her hair in pigtails. And in fact, this morning, um, she actually asked me to be her assistant because the, you know, the process of touching the emoji to bring up the skin tone and then selecting the one you want is kind of a, a two-step process. And she wanted to set all the emojis by default to the one that looked a little bit more Asian um, for our family members. I'm going to do the ones I want to be when I grow up. A scientist, a teacher, a doctor, and a professor. Armemos el PowerPoint, ¿te parece? Sí, señora. Esto es como un golpe visual. Uh -huh. O sea, pondría el dibujo del emoji. Sí. Una definición que es una bebida con car características particulares, ¿sí? Uh -huh. Y es una también. costumbre sí. que existe desde antes que llegara Cristóbal Colón a América. Uh -huh. El Papa Francisco toma mate. Y después, así, en otros famosos, bueno, Leo Messi es el mejor jugador de fútbol del mundo. Mira, el 90% de antioxidantes y es bueno para la salud. Mm. Es que te dice aumenta las defensas del cuerpo. O sea, te sirve incluso hasta como... Sí. Y en todo el planeta se toma yerba. Que... Entonces, eh, podemos decir que es un emoji que se va a usar en todo el planeta, en los cinco continentes. ¿sí? Compite muy dignamente con el té y el café. Sí. Mira, mira este tipo lo que dijo. Dice, yo predigo que el mate mochi, si lo aceptan, se va, eh, va a ser 
se va a abusar su uso como un bong. Y yo dije, ¿qué es un bong? Vine a Google y puse bong. ¡Ah! ¡Nada que ver! ¿No? Vamos. ¿Qué quiere el consorcio? Emojis que sean populares, que la gente los use. Pero bueno, yo entiendo que ellos no quieren saturar. Me Entonces, parece. que borren los menos usados. Hay una propuesta, hoy leí una. ¿De borrar los Twitter. menos usados? Los que no se usan, se borran y que entren Mirarlo nuevos. Y que entren nuevos. Que le den oportunidad a otros emojis que sean más sentir popular. ¿O no? Y ya. Esto es Adobe. Ay, qué me parió. Tengo como que son un poco soberbios, no sé, no sé cómo... No, pero no te manejes de entrada, porque okay. si, si los pones ahí... Hi, good afternoon. Hi. Thank you for having us. Unicode is something in the technical world that we describe as the plumbing, you know? So you, you know, in someone's house, no one ever looks at their pipes or, you know, unless they break. We were living underneath the radar. But once we started encoding emoji characters, all of a sudden we were, became very visible. subcommittee. They had to start managing hundreds and even thousands of proposals that were coming into us and how can this small group of people actually, you know, get their arms around it and analyze them uh, with some consistency. People do try to follow the selection criteria and then of course people's prejudices set in. So I think we don't have so many vegetables because I think most of the Emoji subcommittee members don't like vegetables. That's my theory. <laughs> so there are, there are a lot of unique ways where it seems like people's biases cre do creep in. We only have a small device to fit these on, okay? So, uh, you know, when fonts take up a lot of space and computer programs on here take up a lot of space and the characters themselves take up a lot of space, and really you don't want to be paging across here through thousands of emoji that you're not interested in just to say, hey, friends, uh, let's go for food and drink. We have to exercise some scrutiny about how this will affect all the pieces of the system. The campaign went live on Friday, and like um, I got a text from uh, Carmen, my boss, basically saying like you need to have a look at Twitter because there was a lot of um, interesting comments. I would say, yeah. Um, what the unholy fuck! Once again, women proved to have no creativity and imagination. Now I want a morning boner emoji that I can share with the world every day. I want a shitty diaper emoji. Um, yeah. I've worked for charities for like quite a few years, but when I spoke to my family about it over Christmas, they were they were a bit like perplexed. Like, you know, they're like, what what, what are you doing? <laughs> why why are you doing this? Um, I never really thought about the stigma attached to it. As far as we know, the period pants emoji, which was the winning emoji from our campaign, was stuck in subcommittee, uh, which uh, I, I don't know exactly what that means, but that is the official line of the Unicode consortium. I was talking to someone there and I was like, can you please tell us what's happening? And they were just like, we have no information forthcoming at this time. And that was like three <laughs> months was later, like three wasn't months. it? Yeah. It's just like, what, what is going on? 
It's all very secretive. What we did get was a, a, a small amount of feedback that it is not general use enough. But you know what I found really interesting was looking at the emojis that already exist. I felt like we had such a good case for ours because it affects so many people, you know? It's yeah. so 800 million people are menstruating right now. 800 million people could use a period emoji in this very moment. I don't know how many people are talking about broccoli right now. I feel like there is a duty for emojis to reflect society. Mm. But I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult to get change done when you've got the Unico Consortium, the shady organization based in like, you know, Silicon Valley or whatever, like controlling everything. I mean, this is all a bit silly, right? Emoji. It's not like the most important topic. Emoji is not a serious topic in computer science. You know, if you look, the history of people putting little pictures in line in their text, I mean, it has a very long history. If you look here, this is from the Book of Kells, you know, which is an Irish medieval manuscript of the, the Christian Gospels. And there's all these little inline pictures in the text, like these mythical Irish creatures. Just kind of like emoji today, except much more beautiful. So the idea that we'd limit ourselves to, you know, to the Unicode ones, it just seems like we're setting our sights a bit low. The fact that you can't even use an emojum that's not, you know, on the official list, like, that's crazy. <laughs> you know, the internet was founded in part on a sort of libertarian ethos. Everyone should be able to do sort of what they want. Um, and so what I think consistent with that ethos would be a world where anyone could send whatever inline pictures they want. I mean, people say, oh, emoji, it's a new emerging language. You know, you've heard people say that. But if, if it's really a new emerging language, it shouldn't be controlled by some committee in San Jose, California of like predominantly white, predominantly male text encoding geeks. Right? It's not a good way to, to run a language. So this is the Silicon Valley. That's what the Stanford University is. It's a good school. Very close. Main office. What I want to talk to you about is what we're going to do with I and J in the Passion poem. You see, N and U look exactly the same, and I and J, we know that there are two sounds, but the letter J didn't really exist, et cetera, et cetera. So I want to talk about that. For the, it's, a, it's a transcription issue. OK. I use them. I'm not an enemy of emoji. I've invented a bunch of them. I personally have invented emoji. Never been an enemy. I have some criticisms.
Number one, we should not be trying to add more and more and more and more emoji because it's just going to get complicated. There are currently 1,182 characters. It looks like they want to add in like 60 characters a year. Adding a large number of emoji, number one, it's a maintenance issue for everybody. Number two, it's expensive for any implementers because they have to pay artists to draw all this stuff. And number three, you know, well, how, how far does it go? Now we're at a situation where people were starting to have online petitions to get this one or that one, and the user community seemed to feel that I need to express myself and this doesn't show me properly, and so it, you know, we should add more things. The problem is that it, it's, it's impossible to achieve because somebody's always going to be left out. So I think it's exactly because emoji are being used to express people's feelings and their identities and their relationships that they feel the need to be represented there, right? Because here's this, this resource that's available to us to give out hearts and smiley faces. But then I scroll over a few screens and I see a bunch of people that don't look like me or don't represent me uh, or the things I care about or do day to day. And that suddenly starts feeling off and it in some ways colors the happy smiley faces and the, the red hearts. This is a platform in which people can say, I am or do not belong. There is this fundamental tension between what people want and what the Unicode Consortium and the companies are able to pass on a regular basis. We have bearded people and we have white-haired people, but do we need bearded white-haired people? Or like interracial couple emojis, diverse families. At a certain point, you're looking at tens of thousands of new characters. And ultimately, this is a system that might implode underneath the huge demand. の文字というえっと、私が絵文字を開発した時は、えっと、1997年なので、えっと、私はえっと、24歳。当時は、ま、日本の、え、一番大きな、え、通信会社NTTドコモの、え、社員でした。私がデザインした、えっと、今の絵文字はものすごくこうリアルになりすぎてて、特に自分が作った時の絵文字のニュアンスからはだいぶ変わってきてしまってるなっていう実感です。あの、やはりこういうものがあったらすごくこういう you know, when we first showed the Picassos or Matisse's, people questioned whether that was art. And now nobody even questions that anymore. 
and we want them to be thought of in that same way, for people to take the critical thinking they apply to a modernist painting and apply that to Shigetaka Kurita's emoji. The Museum of Modern Art is about acquiring the art of our time. And the digital dimension of our lives today is so important that we have been looking at it for quite a while. The emoji is just the most recent acquisition, but possibly one of the most important. Design, of course, has a function. It's got a job to do. And emoji do this incredible job of helping bring back the human into digital communication. <laughs> Headed. I can see a couple of different possibilities. One possibility is that they could be superseded by some other type of graphical communication. Another possibility would be that the repertoire of the emoji would shrink down. That's happened with emoticons. And then there's the idea that emoji would develop into more of a graphical language. I think that these, that these patterns and these creative innovations that are making it more language-like will emerge among users. That's what the people are doing from the ground up. We still have only 12 ocean emojis, two of which are whales. Uh, most of which are shallow water animals. And anglerfish in general are iconic deep sea species. And the puffins are really iconic species for the high Arctic, but also people use them as cute. I've also seen a no puffin, like you put a little no sign on top of the puffin as no smoking. I thought that the set of emoji could be improved by adding members of the allium family Garlic, onion, ramp, leek, scallion, shallot. I was sending a message to a friend and I typed shoe and immediately the high heeled stiletto and red came up. And I was like, well, where's the other shoes that all these women wear which don't have a heel? I think we need the cannabis leaf emoji because uh, legalization is happened. It has happened and it's spreading. The sewing needle is certainly as key to human existence as the hammer. Finland is the heavy metal capital of the world. We thought this has to come in. You need a headbanger emoji. We sent a letter to the Unicode uh, consortium saying, you know, this is outrageous. We've got crab emojis. We've got all these, all these other kinds of emojis. No lobster. of this group that encodes new emoji characters has definitely made me more popular at parties. <laughs> or on airplanes when I meet people, you know, all of a sudden they go, wow, you work on that, you know? But we keep talking about getting out of the business of emoji characters because we can't respond to everyone's desires, to the true diversity of the world. Unicode doesn't want to define every emoji character. I'm, I'm stepping in a, a pile of poo emoji here, but the future of emojis will not necessarily still involve Unicode. We only hope that there would be a better answer for emoji, and, and one that actually could cater more to uh, the endless imagination of the human mind.
trajiste los papelitos? So thank you so thank much. You. Nice, to very, nice to meet you. And good luck. We'll let you know. Está frío. Si me calentas algo, me voy a tomar una sopa también. Bueno. Tengo frío, sueño, mal humor. Oh, shit. Flor. No, ya dijo Jenny. No, no. someone inside put a Twitter. Mm. Say, no new character were accepted today, day two. Pero carácter no quiere decir que sea emoji. No, new character sounds like the same thing. No sé, puede ser que no. Yo creo que hay una diferencia. Mm. Jennifer, ¡Cumbla! ¡La puta que lo parió! ¡Pasamos! ¿En serio? Viví porque estaba reprimida que no nos lo iban a pasar todos esos yanquis y... We went as far as we could on our first design, but Unicode was not open to taking that design forward. So we got a pretty clear no. Which of course is a, a shame for us, especially for Francis, who put so much work into this. Now you could always keep campaigning But I think the pragmatic choice was to say, well, what could we get that would also be usable as a symbol to talk about your period? So Francis worked with NHS on um, this new design and, and the submission around it. So yeah, this is the submission on the Unicode website, basically. We fed in a bit with regard to menstruation, but obviously blood is much bigger than just menstruation, so. Yeah, so I heard from our contacts within Unicode that uh, it seems like we potentially have the blood drop emoji now. It's a draft candidate, um, but they reckon that like we've got it. So, so but that's quite because it's so sort of vague. It's actually it doesn't necessarily represent everything no. about a period. No. So that wouldn't have quite worked. So I just. Maybe it's not the perfect symbol, but I think we, as we found when we were designing them, we'd be hard pushed to find one perfect symbol. So yeah. actually, it's very exciting um, to see. Yeah. Obviously, we'll have to figure out like how we talk about it and stuff. But I mean, you know, it's. I don't know, like whether you can have a merge for everything.
Okay. Okay. Install now. Verifying update. Inshallah, what? Are you ready? It's next to the turban. Where is the turban? <gasps> yeah! group chat's name. You remember this? Now, no longer do I need the turban emoji and the girl emoji. <laughs> no, not only that. She was selected by Times one of the 30th most influential teams <laughs> in the world for 2017. Where do you go, Raya? <laughs> as an idea to have it actually be executed and just, you know, done and have it on the phone and something like real and tangible. In millions and millions of Muslim women, you know, now they feel... Uh... This one girl, she said, Apple doing something right. Thank you for the emoji. And like, it's so nice that, you know, like I, people feel this way because like people always say, oh, it's an emoji, it's an emoji, but if an emoji like, brings about feelings of uh, happiness and like representation then that's right yeah that's it's, right. it means something えっと、ここにあの、えっと、ハートの絵文字が入っていて、で、それがまあ、絵文字の原型。あ、そうなんですか。なんか作ってるんですよ。でも、顔がないボタンは。そうそうそう。それしかボタンがないから。メニューが。
私は絵文字作ったって言われてますけどあのどちらかというと見つけたに近いもし私があのタイミングで作らなくても何年か先かに誰かが必ず作っていた白物だと思うので作ったのは昔の話なので。今はもうだからみんながみんなのものをして使ってるって状態ですね